Hello everyone, this is M. Allen West of FlashCadaver.com and today we're going to cover UPBGE, which is a game engine based off of Blender 3D. So you'll just go ahead and download whatever version you need from the website. I'll leave a link in the description and then you'll have a folder that you'll have to unzip and you'll just click the Blender Launch EXE and uh, it will launch the game engine. When you first get the game engine uh, it'll look like this. So what you need to do is you need to grab this bottom bar here, scroll it up, click down here in the bottom on this little icon and go to logic editor. And this is how we're going to start with basic games. And then uh, there's another plugin available for it. If you click here, you'll see I have the Logic Node Editor, which is not installed by default. So you'll have to go up into your preferences, go to add ons, and then search for Node. After you have Node select, uh, typed in at the top, uh, you'll select this Node Logic Editor for games. Uh, there are other ones available as well. I'm not exactly sure what they do. I haven't installed them yet, but uh, you are free to try them if you want. Uh, after you have that installed, the, it'll be available in your options down here at the bottom. So we're going to start with the Logic Bricks, however, because it's the easiest one to do. And uh, we're going to make a basic opening door mechanism. So first we're going to select this object right here. We're going to add a sensor and we're going to make that sensor a uh, key press so we'll say uh, keyboard and then we'll do the space bar to open the door and we'll add a state and it'll open up this little thing right here so when we uh, if you click this drop down right here it'll show you the states so this is the state we're on so if I connect these two together you'll see that the states are highlighted for this state so next you need to go to the second state which would be here so if you see there's no uh, sensors or anything listed here on the second state so in the second state we're going to select always and then we're going to uh, say that this is always going to do a motion and the uh, motion is going to be Y in the positive so make that Y in the positive we're going to connect these two together by clicking and dragging from one to the other. And we're also going to put a delay on here. And the delay we are going to set to invert, which is the opposite. And we're going to make it 51. And then connect these two together. And then we'll go back to the first state by clicking this little box right here. And we've got this all set up, but we need the state set up, so we're going to have it go to the second state. So now if I have this area right here with my mouse and click P, it should play it and then hit spacebar and it plays and stops. Now if I didn't have a delay on there, the object would just keep going. And because I have it inverted, it's an inverted delay which makes it stop after a certain given time. So now we know where that stops. So then we're going to click Shift A, click Create a Cube, and then we're going to go up to our Grab Tool, move it over, click P, do Space Bar, and as you can see it moved all the way over to this object right here. I have them spaced about six uh, blocks apart on the uh, grid. Uh, you can also turn on the magnet tool if it helps you move the object. 
So now that we have that set up, we're going to go up here to the top, change this so that we can see the materials. We're going to go down to the materials over here on the right hand side. We're going to change this one to red or blue or something. Let's change it to let's change it to red. Then we're going to add a material to this one by selecting this object and then change that one to blue. So now if I click P in our spacebar, you can see the objects pretty much merged together. But we want this other object to be a little bit thinner, so we'll go back over to this object, rescale it. And then we'll tab in the edit mode by clicking the tab button. Go up here to the top, select faces. Select a face on this side and drag it towards the blue cube. So it's barely touching it. And then click and drag up on the top face. Tab out of edit mode, select this one tab back into edit mode, grab that, bring it up, E to extrude, let me see, I'm having a little bit of a lag here, so, okay, we're back on track, E to extrude, then select this space, E to extrude over to the other edge of this door. E to extrude one more time. And then E to extrude down. Now of course you could do a uh, boolean where you can uh, where you can actually make the uh, door cut a uh, area out in the middle. So we might do that here in a second. So now that we have the door set up, we're going to go ahead and grab these faces, stretch them out, grab these faces, stretch them out. Now we'll go back and tab out of edit mode, select this, go the door, then go back to state 2, add a sound, and then I'll open up a sound file that I downloaded, and we will connect these two together. So now if I click P on my keyboard and click spacebar, you can sort of hear the door sound. I'll have to turn it up a little bit, but so P on my keyboard and then you can see that every time I hit the space bar the door opens and it only plays that sound once you can't click it again after the door is open it's open for good and that is pretty much how you do a sliding door in the uh, blender game engine now you might want to also uh, Duplicate this door, shift D, enter, and then click and drag it. Go back to your scale tool, scale this, and scale it up as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut a small groove just in case there's some kind of weird issue with collisions. And We'll go ahead and make this just a hair bigger than the door. It doesn't have to be much. Just don't cut all the way through the both sides of the wall. And then select the wall. Go over here to your modifiers. Add a modifier. Select Boolean. And then you can either click this dropper tool or you can uh, select from the drop down menu. What I'm going to do is use the dropper tool, 
select the cube, it automatically fills it in. Click this drop down, click apply, delete this. And as you can see, now I have a cut inside of the wall so that there's no weird issues with collisions. Now what we want to do is we want to shift A to create a plane, click S to scale, and we want to make sure that this is at ground level so we could turn on the magnet it might be able to drag it down to zero yeah that's pretty good so if you have the magnet tool on it helps you with scaling stuff um, shift a create a cube drag that out in front of the door this is going to be our character then we want to add a sensor to our character and we're going to use a keyboard Normally I'd use space as jump, but I've already set jump to uh, the space bar to open the door. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the door and change this because I don't like the fact that, that I set that to space. So go back to state one from this drop down here. And then change this to, uh, we'll just change it to Z. That's fine, because we're not going to use Z for anything. Go back to our character. Select this, spacebar to jump, add character motion. And we'll select motion. From this drop down, select character motion. Highlight jump by clicking it right down here at the bottom. Connect these two together, click P on the keyboard, nothing happened. We need to change this so that there's a jump motion in the, what do we need it in? Let's see, no, nope, that's not right. Okay, we don't need to select that. We need to go over here to, uh, physics which is over here on the side change this to character now let's click P on our keyboard and see what that does there we go now our characters uh, jumping alright so now we need to set up the character controls for motion we're going to add a make sure you have your character selected and we're going to add a uh, keyboard sensor. We're going to use W for forward. And then we're going to add a motion sensor to this. And I believe that this one will be in the X direction. I believe. Click and drag these two together. Click P on your P keyboard. Nope. We need to do negative x. So we'll do negative 10 in the x. P on your keyboard. Now we can go forward. We've got a problem though. We can jump up the door, which we don't want to have. So, but if we click Z for our, open our door, we can walk right through the door now. Um, let's see. Well, we're going to select our door. And go over here to the physics tab collisions and we will change that to convex hull click P on our keyboard go back over here and we're still getting some weird collision issues maybe we can change this one to select the character click collisions change that to box let's see if that does anything Nope, still an issue. Uh, convex hull. <laughs> oh well, we'll we'll figure that out here later in later tutorials. So anyhow, we've got this all set up. Uh, now we need a motion for the keyboard to go 
backwards, so S, we're going to set a keyboard to S, and then add another motion, and this one will be positive on the X, and click P. Uh, we didn't connect them, so we have to make sure that these wires are connected. So connect that, P, and now we can move backwards and forwards. And we can also open our door. I think one of our issues is we're too close to the edge over here, so let's move our character over so it's in the center of the door or at least close to it. Turn off the magnet. Now, let's see what we got. There we go. That was our issue. We were hitting this wall over here. So we're going to go ahead and change that wall to a convex hole too. P on the keyboard forwards, backwards, Z to open the door, uh, why are we, what are we colliding with? We are definitely colliding with something, P, Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what we're colliding with now. Maybe it's because I changed this to convex hull. Let's turn that off. Let's change that to uh, some other mesh. Let's see what we got. Well, that worked. Not sure why, but that one was not wanting to select convex hull probably do cube or something else too. But anyhow, sometimes if you have problems with collision, you change these collision boundaries and play around with those and you'll find out that it'll actually make it where things will work better. So that is basically it for a sliding door. It's pretty easy. Um, as long as you understand how to do states. Now there's another way you can do it also. You could also animate this in the dope sheet or an animating timeline and then go over to the dope sheet and all that kind of stuff and play around with it there and uh, then have this trigger in animation which I'll show that one here in a little bit in the next video. So that's basically all there is to doing a sliding door. Have a great day. Thank you.